Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic coming at you live this morning with the research moment. And today what we are talking about is this brand new paper that just came out, uh, I think a few months ago, it was uh, 2019. Uh, it was by Robert Kessinger in the knee chest uh, upper cervical group. Um, this was actually a, a multi-office um, oriented uh, study, which is really cool because they were able to reproduce the results across many different doctors in many different offices. It was Robert Kessinger, Trevor Qualls, John Hart, Henry Dallas, uh, Michael Anderson, Jared Whalen, and Leland Bradshaw, all upper cervical chiropractors. And what we're talking about today is this uh, topic and thing called pulse pressure. So what is pulse pressure? We'll get into that in a second. But uh, the title of the paper is Pulse Pressure Findings Following Upper Cervical Care, a Practice-Based Observational Study. Um, so what is pulse pressure? pulse pressure? Pulse pressure is an indicator of cardiovascular health and is the difference between systolic and diastolic bl blood pressure. An important etiological consideration is the autonomic nervous system balance. What is the autonomic nervous system? We'll get into that in a second. Um, the purpose of the study is to observe pulse pressure changes following upper cervical corrections um, in a six-week course of care. So working on the upper, upper neck and uh, measuring what's happening to the, to the heart, heart uh, blood pressure, the pulse pressure, uh, the diastolic and systolic change. Um, now what we know is that uh, there were <clears throat> 130 patients presenting in five different clinics were separated into three groups based on initial pulse pressure groups with 40 millimeters of mercury considered as normal, uh, which is 120 over 80 is considered normal. Uh, so that's that 40 uh, millimeter of mercury difference. Um, the medium was 49 millimeters of mercury and high was greater than 49 millimeters of mercury. So um, larger than a 50 millimeter of mercury difference. So it would be like, uh, for instance, uh, 80 uh, or 130 or higher over uh, 80. So uh, that would be a, a, a high difference in pulse pressure. Now, what they did was they did six weeks of care. Uh, pulse pressure reduced by 8.9, almost 9 millimeters of mercury in the high group, which was statistically significant um, with a large effect size of 0.8. Changes in the low and the normal, or the low and the medium groups, or normal, were not statistically significant, probably because there wasn't an, a, a real nervous system issue with the brain body connection for those people. I'm just saying that the paper doesn't say that, but but that's what I'm saying. Um, and the conclusion is, in this observational study, the group displaying the highest pulse pressure demonstrated statistically significant redu reduction in pulse pressure. So what does this mean? Well, elevated pulse pressure is a recognized cardiovascular risk factor, and some studies have suggested to, to be a marker for preclinical cardiovascular disease. A meta-analysis involving 8,000 patients found that a modest increase of 10 millimeters of mercury in pulse pressure increased the risk of cardio cardiovascular events and mortality by almost 20%. So those people in this study, out of the 100, and, I think it was like 30 people, the percent that were the in the high range, in that high pulse pressure range, so that big difference between their diastolic and, or systolic and diastolic, um, the lub dub, uh, that group would have, they would have been in this, in this range that was in risk of cardiovascular disease, disease events and mortality by almost 20% more than the other groups. And now that's lowered because their nervous system is balanced. So let me explain why. So in an upper cervical office, what we do is we measure the differences between the head and the neck and how that's affecting the entire body and the entire nervous system. Because that upper neck is the most prone to accident and injuries because it's, it's the most mobile, but it's, it doesn't have a bony lock. All that holds it together, ligaments, tendons, and muscles. And your brainstem sits right up there. And what does your brainstem do? Well, your brainstem is what controls your autonomic nervous system. So right here in this picture, we have the parasympathetic right there. 
in the sympathetic nervous system. The rest and digest and the uh, fight or flight. Now, if you, we look here, heart controlled, right? Heart controlled by, if my little screen will uh, focus, the vagus nerve here in the parasympathetics. So what is the vagus nerve? Well, the vagus nerve is the, it's called the wandering nerve, but it controls all of the um, internal organs uh, in their, uh, or their parasympathetic control. So the slowing down. And we have a direct connection between the brain stem right up here, right where the upper neck sits, and that vagus nerve control of, of how the heart regulates itself. So we know that there is a direct nerve connection between the brain and the heart. We know that people that have high risk for cardiovascular disease, um, they, have, uh, they may have this, this imbalance in the neck. We, saw, we see it in this paper, and we've seen it many times. There are many papers that I've, I've gone over here. The Dickholz study, um, the, there are many other studies that we've talked about with heart rate variability. Um, all the other uh, topics where the heart can be affected by how the neck is aligned. And I, we see it in our office where um, the blood pressure will de decrease after six to eight months of care. So it's an observational effect. If you know of someone that's suffering from uh, high risk of cardiovascular disease, obviously diet and exercise are a big part of that. However, there are many stories where we've heard of this, this super healthy person has a heart attack and passes away and it's weird because there's no there's no uh, uh, reason why that seems uh, uh, apparent. And sometimes it might be because just because the nervous system is not connected, the brain to body connection is not there. And that's what we do in an upper cervical chiropractic office is we work to connect that brain to body back up. So all the messages are flowing back and forth from every from the brain down to every organ tissue and cell and from every organ tissue and cell back up to the brain. And so Dr. Kessinger did a great job in this paper, fantastic study, and uh, you know we, uh, we are thankful for all those that do the research out there in the upper cervical world. And uh, if you guys have more questions, give us a call. Our office is Arite Chiropractic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, 603-380-9184. That's 603-380-9184. And I hope you have a great, great uh, day. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.